of that they'd reckon it already look not even used it yet so we brought the whole contraption in to the workshop because we're gonna do a few little mods to it so today what we're gonna be doing is putting the rest of the uh, soldering, I can't even turn it around, it's that heavy. On the back of here, anyway, we've got the elements, and those elements, here's a good example, they need to be attached to all the correct components. So we've got like the crane's bill, let's get zoomed in on the actual thing I'm talking about. How's that? So you can see we've got the track clamp element there. And the cable for the crane's build float switch, which is our safety feature for the HLT, needs to be connected into there. So that is going to have to be soldered on. And then these two outlets here, one of them's for the thermo probe that goes on the inside, that's already connected. And the other one is the float switch return to the control box. So we need to also route the cables for these and then decide on the final positions for them. We need to put some mounting plates on the base for some pumps. So we need to know where the pumps are going to go. And once we've got the pumps in place and the pots where they're going to live and we start running the wires, then the cables are going to run through this, this like little cable loom thing. So we'll th thread all the cables into this little spine, which will keep everything nice and neat. And we'll run them right up to the box where they'll go into their own connector. So like the HLT, all the cables for the HLT will just have one python and that'll run into here. Same for the boil kettle and same for the mash tun. So if we want to take one pot off independently, we don't have to unthread any cables, so to speak. Or I might do it so the loom stays in place and we just disconnect it all here. No, that wouldn't work because we need to be able to remove the cable with this to take it away for cleaning. So yeah, we're going to have to make it all detachable in that respect. Right, that's one problem solved. It'd be easier if I take off the tripod for this as well, folks. So. We're also starting to put together all the bowl valves and everything else. I've just put a big order in for GC stainless because I don't have everything that I need. But I do have some uh, valves that he sent me previously. So these were a few freebies from uh, Andy at GC stainless. And I think one or two of them might have come from Matt Francis at Keg Kingdom. So, cheers to both of you chaps anyway. You're always there when, when needed. So this uh, three-piece ball valve is gonna live on the boil kettle, like so. And that's going to be the input for the Whirlpool port. So we're gonna come off here with a street elbow. We're gonna go straight down, and I'm gonna turn at a right angle to allow recirculation to happen. I don't yet have anything to go here because obviously we've put our probe in the element, uh, what's it called, thermal well anyway, so we don't need that. Oh, I've also got this little uh, half inch to quarter inch reducer, that's going to screw on the bottom of the whirlpool arm to reduce the diameter down in order to give us a bit of a jet so we can actually induce a whirlpool in there. On the mash tun we are going to have this outlet going straight to a pump and then that pump is going to be throttled on the output and it's going to come up to here where it can just be connected onto the mash tun inlet where we are going to make a rotating sparge arm. I was just seeing if things fitted so it looks like I'm going to go ahead and make it with the camlock fittings and then we'll bend this copper pipe into the right shape so it comes up and out round 
so I get as much height, well there's nothing on that lid is there, but I wanted to get as much height as possible above a grain bed where we could sparge, maybe we sparge with the lid off, would, would make sense I, I imagine. And then of course this is going to just connect up to, not this John Guest one, but I've got some uh, own brand screw fix uh, tees. You can tell the difference because they have a very, well, you see the, the push fit fittings? Well they're not really push fit release, that's the difference between these two, but if you take the rubber gasket out and just leave the retaining pin in there and these will rotate freely. So that's the plan for us to have a rotating spar jar but we'll talk about that in more detail on another episode. Uh, so that would be the inlet or the input for the sparge out of the over for the vol off actually out of the bottom of the kettle into the pump out of the pump into the vol off when we're finished with the vol off we'd isolate it with this valve here we're going to have a u section here to bring us back round again for another attachment which is going to be part of the HLT system and then that will allow us to put sparge water in place of the vol off and sparge the grain and we can then detach this hose and we just attach it simply to here or here and go ahead and fill up the boil kettle so we've got pumps to mount pipes to cut all that kind of stuff but I'm not going to do that until we've got all the electrics in place and we know exactly where things want to go and we've got all the pipes in place. So we're going to have to wait until uh, probably Monday for the GC stuff to arrive. Knowing Andy, it will arrive tomorrow because bang, they're like that. It'll be straight out today and I'll get it in the morning. But we're going to Leeds tomorrow for a day out. So I won't be able to do any vlogging for you on the kit. And uh, another thing that I want to do as well is put in some retaining lugs for the HLT when I find out where it's actually going to live. I'm just going to weld a couple of uprights down here like this just so when it's located, it's located permanently. And I think I'm going to kind of have it on a little bit of a, an angle like that. So we've got somewhere here where we can kind of put bowls and hops and whatever else is waiting to go in there. And also when this is open, it drips on the floor and not on the stainless. And all of these accessories for the Herms coil remain accessible from the side as well. And then of course, when we're recirculating uh, the Herms for the mash, we can just simply take that hose connected to the top here and then this outlet there that hose can just simply come on to the vol off and again there we've made we've made the uh, the loop if you like just by incorporating one more hose from there to there so that's not a problem uh, this section here is going to be the inlet for the HLT recirculation so we are going to be able to just recirculate the HLT water directly into the pot or we can close that off and then the HLT liquid will go via that through our little assembly that we're going to be making here. So we need to incorporate probably just a hose fit in there. That's going to be a permanent fixture though so we can utilize the ball valve that we're going to put on here to keep that HLT section closed off. So that was quite a ramble, I hope it all that made sense to you and I'm sure it will make much more sense when we're seeing it in the flesh and not trying to explain it from out of my mind. Right, let's get some more of this soldering done and uh, get this bench looking a little bit tidier. Okay folks, as time is ticking on today, and I'm not here tomorrow, what I'd like to do, oh, I'm down. What I'd like to do 
is just show you how I've been soldering on these terminals for the uh, for the probes. So essentially, we're just taking this two core cable and uh, extending it, and then we're going to stick the other end onto the element and inside the element obviously we've got the other end of this which is connected to either the cranes bill float switch or the PT100 probe which is inside inside the thermal well on the element which I've been talking about so these are quite tricky little buggers to get put together so I thought I'd just show you what I do to make them kind of work. So I think I'm zoomed in as far as we can go. And I'll try to kind of just lock the focus there. How's that? Should have worked. So you should be able to see me. So I've got the two core cable and I've just stripped this back ever, ever so slightly. Uh, just so we've got a couple of the strands sticking out then what I'm going to do is just tin them with the soldering iron so I've got the soldering iron set at 350 seems to work for me there we go so that's those tinned up and then what we're going to do is open the other end of this little connector this aviation plug now this is the three pin but I'm only using pins one and three on it I just got the third pin as a little bit of redundancy more than anything else and what we're going to do of course don't forget to slide this over the wires because that is after all going to be the terminal we're going to clamp that down when we get round to it then also, something else I've got here is a little bit of heat shrink tubing. So we're just going to take a little sliver of that and we're going to also pop that over the end as well. Just like so. And then we're going to take our uh, end and I've set up a little holder here. So what I like to do is figure out which is terminals 1 and terminals 3 if you just have the two terminal job you'd not have to do that then they have this little retaining clip on there so for those two terminals I just pull that little retaining it's not a clip it's a little bit of pressed metal that they've used to retain it but by doing that I can see straight away which is which and then I've just been popping it into this little clamp like that just to hold it off slightly so I'm trying here to just bring you guys in slightly so you can kind of see what I'm doing because obviously the shot out there is not fantastic so we'll just refocus down on that little section oh my gosh didn't have it zoomed in after all, I had it zoomed out, what a plonker. But yeah, anyway, there we go. So that there is the little fellow that we're going to be soldering into. So you've just seen me tin the ends of this section here. So that is now ready to flow onto there. But before we do that, we're going to want to tin the two little segments here otherwise we're going to have a problem getting it to flow because these are just kind of I think it's just steel it's really quite tricky to get it to wet and there we go that went maybe you'll see a little bit better on this one uh, it's quite difficult for me to do it on the camera but we just pop a bit of solder in there and you just see it kind of it just wets into the rest of the fitting and there we are we've got it 
So now we can come at it, I'll try not to foul the shot, we can come at it from this angle and then where we've got the two tinned pieces we just reflow that solder and hopefully it sets up before it comes apart. Now a lot of the soldering uh, I actually picked up from watching from watching Big Clive's videos and uh, he is a fantastic resource of information if you want to get into the electrical side of things. He just does talks about different components, he breaks them down, tears them down. Really good channel. Anyway, let's see if we can reflow this. This one isn't going as smoothly as I would like. Yeah, because of course the camera's in the way. So I'm just going to have to try and get that back off there now because it's stuck in the wrong position. There we go. And I think we've almost got that. Yeah, so I'm not 100% happy with that, but for our purpose it will do. So I'll just turn the autofocus servo back on and we'll have a look at it. There we go. It's not the best one of the uh, four or five that I've done today, but it's certainly going nowhere. It is soldered. I could come in now from the side. Of course, you're, not, you're gonna struggle to see this because of the position I've got the camera in, but I could try to just get a better connection by flowing it. This may all go horribly wrong. It might come apart. In fact, it's good enough. So let's just zoom out a touch. And then the reason we've got this little bit of heat shrink is we're not going to cover the terminals. There's no need to do that. But we are going to try to thicken the cable a little bit. So I don't have a heat gun. But this low torch held at a distance will do the job. There we go. And then what we're going to do is pull across the, uh, the end. And now you can see it's too tight to go over this end section, whereas before it just flew straight over it. So the idea was to just embiggen the girth, you know, on the... Uh, on the doodly do itself so that it stays in position and then we're going to carefully try and put this the world's most fiddly screw back into its hole there we go and then we're just going to nip up these two screws on the retainer just like that and there we go now isn't that a neat job? That is pretty nifty, if you ask me. So, come on, let's focus on it, because nobody can bleed and see it. There we go. So, that's grabbed it. That's going nowhere for a long time. And then that we can obviously use now to bring in the data, if you like, from the thermoprobe and bring it right up to the control panel. So what I've also done this afternoon is just weld these retaining tabs on here just to keep the HLT in position. So the idea behind this is when we put the HLT on then we can move the trolley around a little bit or should I say the brew stand and the pot, the pot's gonna stay where it belongs, if that makes sense. And then also, 
underneath the control panel I've managed to get some of the uh, connectors plugged in for the uh, for the elements so you'll see that we've just gone ahead and uh, stuck all that lot on there we're still waiting for some of these to come in um, and I think they will be the terminations this end for these cables I think I'm not sure yet I'm not sure but here you can see the finished article so we've now got the two plugs that we're going to put in there this one doesn't need a plug the cable will be slung along the back here in its little cable carrier I'll go and get the cables actually for that section that we've done that's these two here and we can kind of just plug them in and I can give you a quick view of actually almost how it's going to look when it's complete so that one goes in there and then you just tighten these aviation plugs up I'm dropping it that's a good boy and then this one remember to not actually get it in shot when you're doing it that's the best way to make a vlog there we go then these cables will follow the same route as the power cable and of course terminate under there when we've measured them and strapped everything together so I've just got one more to do here so now we've got this one done I can kind of plug it in and we can figure out how long I need to cut it there we go and then I'll just take this one into the shop and solder the last one up and then that'll be it for the day I think so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then clear off home I was hoping to get some more done on this today but inevitably you know things tend to take a little bit longer than I suspected I did actually mess around quite a lot this morning with fittings and where to put this solenoid and everything else for the automatic uh, water system and then we've also got this shebango so we've got the pump with a sight glass and a big valve coming out the top of it if the camera would like to focus on that for us please totally doesn't want to so you can see how it's going to look so yeah I was playing about with where I want to have these pieces of equipment on the kit itself and I'm not 100% sure yet so we'll have a break this weekend folks we'll come back so not even sure where the camera died there but I was saying we'll have a break this weekend we'll come back next week we'll finish off this build uh, but it's looking grand we're very close now pumps to mount the final few bits of the pipework should be in I've got some silicon hose I can use I've got some cam lock fittings I can use all we need to do is get it all set up so big push next week and then I think we'll be ready to use it anyway anyway we'll see you we'll see you on the next vlog cheers <laughs>